Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we are playing a Tony Scapone special. If you're unfamiliar with Tony Scapone, he's sort of like your storm, storm adjacent deck brewer of choice these days. He puts out a load of good content and you should check it out. I'll put a link underneath in my uh, description. So what is this deck trying to do? We are trying to put a Goblin Char Belcher into play, activate it targeting our opponent when we have no lands in our deck, and then it will kill our opponent. So how are we going about doing this? We've got a bunch of mana, and the only lands we have are ones that aren't lands when they're in our deck. So this gets skipped over by Char Belcher, but we can play it as a land if we need to. Then we've got Chrome Moxes, Lion's Eye Diamonds, Lotus Petals, Mox Opals, Rite of Flame, Mana Morphos, which we'll get to in a second, Spirit Guides, and a Bergy. These are how we're going to be generating mana in our deck. We're probably going to be Echo of Eons wheeling a few times through Gamble and Lion's Eye Diamond to get that set up until we find the right pieces. And we've got a bunch of these Mishra's Baubles and Urza's Baubles, which turn on our Mox Opals. They give us a lot of Storm for Galvanite Relays. But here's the other cool thing they do. They really synergize with this new card down here, Vindictive Flame Stoker. This is one mana for a 1-2. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on it. Pay 7 and sacrifice it to discard your hand and draw 4 cards. This ability costs 1 less to activate for each oil counter on it. So if you play this out and play a bunch of 0 drop artifacts, you can quite quickly get this cost down to between 1 to 3 mana to draw 4 cards. Which is pretty good in what we're trying to do. We're just trying to draw enough cards to assemble the way we go off. Our sideboard is something we need to talk about as well because you know the main deck is very linear to just get this goblin child voucher going but in the sideboard we can board into an empty the warrens package here with some soul lands if we're not child vouchering our opponent we need to empty the warrens we have this plan which is pretty decent and we've got some layer on the voids to stop the combo decks that can go under us things like reanimator for example or oops or spells and we've got some shattering sprees to blow up chalice of the void or pithing needle or someone is going to get in the way of what we're trying to accomplish. That is more or less the deck. Now, first things first, I'm not a Char Belcher player or a Storm player. So this might be a little bit ropey from time to time is how I play, but we're going to try our best. But uh, Tony Scapone put out a really good video with this that I watched earlier today. And I thought, yep, I'm just going to have a go at this myself. We get to play a new card, which is what I'm trying to do at the moment since a new set's just come out. And this one looks like a pretty fun one. That I can record within the time I have to record today, which is a little bit less than normal. So, let's jump into a league. But first, like, comment, subscribe. These are three things you can do that cost you nothing and really help me out. So, why not drop me some love there? All right, let's jump into a league with Tony Scapone's Belcher deck. Okay, so we get to do a pretty big Vindictive Flame Stoker into Shatter into Galvanic Relay. So this pays for this. This pays. For the right of flame. Oh, so we, if we want to do the Galvanic Relay, we can't do the Flame Stoker. All right, we're still going to keep this, though. We do get one more draw before we have to deploy our thing. So if we can find an additional mana somewhere, we can kind of have our cake and eat it a bit. Just an Urza Saga. So we don't have to play around days or anything, so that's good. This could be... Uh, it could be a blue deck with Force of Wheels in. We just have to wait and see. A Mox Opal. Okay. So this is a pretty good one for us. So we'll play this. We'll pay three life. So we can tap this for one and cast the right of flame, then play our second Mox Opal. So I think we are okay here. So Vindictive Flame Stoker. And we'll play out a Bauble. Put a counter on our guy. Play out another Bauble. Play out a Mox. Tap this for red. Play out another Mox. Cast his right of flame. And then we will cast our Galvanic Relay for a bunch. So this... Uh, Flame Stoker is going to have a whole bunch of counters on now. So it's just going to cost us one mana to draw four cards off of this one. Let's have a look at our Exile Zone, what we found here. So we've got a Belcher, we've got two Lion's Eye Diamonds. Yeah, this should be enough to win next turn. And let's see if we can get some information about our opponent's deck here. A Mishra's Bauble. Okay, so this doesn't really tell us a huge amount about what our opponent's working with. We have to resolve this Belcher though, but we'll see. If this fails, we can draw some more cards because we have a Flame Stoker. Mike Synth Guidance. This is probably some sort of... It could just be like 8 cast or it could be a Frexion Dreadnought deck. Our opponent has a Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay, uh, this is going to be a, a Storm deck. Okay, so we're kind of 
ships in the night here, whether or not they can kill us here. So they've got two lines like diamonds. Okay, this is looking a bit mirrory here. Okay, we'll probably get an echo of Eons here, so we don't want to crack our bauble. So we've kind of wasted this draw by cracking the Mishra's bauble when we did. But if our opponent's echoing, it means they don't have it now, so we might get a chance to continue playing. But if they're echoing, it's probably going to be pretty good for them. But they've got the writing on the wall that they're dead next turn, so they kind of need to do this. Okay, we got a bunch of stuff here. Like, if our opponent can win, they can win. Okay, so they're the Riddler, but with Vindictive Flamestoker added. That seems good. This Vindictive Flamestoker feels like the real deal here. I guess we can just yield through this turn because we're not doing anything. Can our opponent kill us this turn? Quite likely. Each artifact they play here is almost... So it's giving them a loot, but it's also getting a counter on Flamestoker, so it's probably like a third of a card every time they play an artifact like this, in terms of when they get to recoup it back with the Flamestoker. They should be able to just play out all their stuff and kill us here. But we'll wait and see. So what I could have done on my first turn, perhaps, was crack the Flamestoker to get some more cards into our deck and then see if that's enough to let us combo or give us more mana to then do the Galvanic Relay. But I had a pretty clean Relay plus draw four cards on the next turn going on, which I thought would probably be all right. But if our opponent kills us this turn, then so be it. Okay, so they have a Containment Construct. If you're unfamiliar with this combo, what this card says is whenever you discard a card, you then exile that card from your graveyard if you want to, and you can play that card until end of turn. So every time that they play an artifact with Riddlesmith, the card they discard is a card that they get to play this turn, so they just get to draw a whole bunch of cards every time they play something. So everything they're doing now is cantripping effectively, and their Lion's Eye Diamond, when they crack, it has no downside. It's just straight up Black Lotus. So they should be able to close this one out. They will need to find action, but they've got this Flame Stoker to hit more, four more cards. Two mana draw four, basically, is what the uh, Vindictive Flame Stoker seems to be. Pretty powerful card in these sorts of decks. Okay. The opponent's got one card, but they've got this Breakthrough. So what the Breakthrough does is they draw four cards, and when they discard them, they all go under the Containment Construct anyway. Same with Gamble. So they're just kind of free rolling us here. They just need to find the win condition, which is probably a grape shot. They might have Burning Wish, so they can play these out, draw some cards, and then they have Gamble for whatever their win condition is once their Storm is high enough, as long as they've got enough mana. They have the Lines Eye Diamonds, so they should be alright mana-wise. So they have a Bauble, and a Lotus Petal, they're drawing some more cards, discarding some more cards. They're taking quite a lot of operations here. And they should be able to get there. I'd just like to see what their win con is. So here comes the gamble. There's the grape shot. Crack for red mana with the LED. And then just grape shots for lethal. Sure. That works for me. We can see we always on the stack. All right. So I think this might be a ley line of the void matchup. Reason being, they need to echo Vions and also. The way that Containment Construct works is the cards go into their graveyard, then they exile them. So there is that. The question is, what am I supposed to be boarding out for these? That is something I'm not certain about. My instinct tells me it's Manomorphos. I think it's the Manomorphos. I could be wrong. No, we just roll like this. So what does this do? Petal. Maybe it was Galvanic Relay we're supposed to sideboard out actually thinking about it so we've got one two so we have two three mana so we can do like some pitiful stuff here but i think we want to mulligan and try and echo v on our opponent so that we rent mess up their starting hand we're looking at here this hand seems very slow to me we can play this guy out and do some stuff let's mulligan um okay i think we keep this one we gamble for the lines eye diamond if we hit we hit if we don't, then that's a bit awkward. We can slow them down with a ley line in case this goes wrong. So probably getting rid of... Hmm. It's probably the, the Gamble or the Chrome Mox. Like, we're going to use a Spirit Guide to cast our Gamble because we... Um, because we'd rather have more cards in our hand for the purpose of trying to hit with our Gamble. That's my logic on this one, anyway. All right, let's cast this. In red. Let's go and get ourselves a Lion's Eye Diamond. Let's cast this. 
Crack this a triple blue. Echo Eons. So we mess up our opponent's hand potentially here. Now what are we looking at? If we Chromox imprinting Right of Flame. Play out this guy. We can play this out. This one. And this one. And this one. So this is going to have four counters on it. So this is going to cost four less. So this is going to cost three mana. So we can crack our LED to draw three cards here. I think that's worth doing. To draw four cards, sorry. So now we have a gamble. That's not particularly helpful right now. I think we might have to pass the turn here. All right, how bad is this from our opponent? A saga and a bauble. They tend not to be that much of a turn one combo deck, but they do have the ability to turn one combo. We were supposed to crack our baubles. That was a mistake. I pressed the wrong button. Okay, so we get to do this whole shenanigans again. This containment construct is actually pretty bad right now. Are we gambling for something here? So we can... Let's have a look at our deck list. So what can we gamble for here? Nothing that's actually that exciting to me, to be honest. But we probably want to throw out some of our spells because we don't know if we're going to have them next turn, necessarily. They can hard cast the Echo Vion through our thing. So we're going to gamble for, I think, a Lion's Eye Diamond here. Okay, we lost the Right of Flame. That's a little bit annoying, but acceptable. So let's stack up our counters on this guy. I think we're going to want to play these things out because our opponent has the ability to wheel us. It's certainly harder with what we've got going on here. So this has got seven counters on. So we can pop both of these for four mana. Uh, if it's got three counters on, we can pop both of these to draw four cards. But then we kind of won't have anything going. So I think if we wait one more turn, we're in a better spot. If we'd have drawn two extra cards off of our baubles the previous turn, might have been in a better spot as well. So hopefully our opponent doesn't know how Lane on the Void interacts with their containment construct. Because their cards never go to the graveyard to be exiled by the containment construct. Now, they can just do a beatdown plan with Urza's Saga, which is sometimes what their backup plan is. You also see that in the Mono Black Storm deck as well. All right, our opponent is just passing the turn. Oh, no, they're attacking. Yeah, we'll take two. We're not going to get rid of our draw four. All right, let's have a look at our opponent. A gamble, sure. On top of that library is an LED. All right, so they're telling us they've got it next turn, potentially. Obviously, they still have to get around the Leyland of the Void, but they've got a lot of mana up as well, and they're going to have some action off the Urza Saga here. Okay, so our bonus cards are a Chromox and a Lotus Petal. Okay. This Chromox can imprint the Leyland of the Void, which we're going to do. Right, so Leyland of the Void goes underneath it. Power Lotus Petal. Let's go up to five. Play this, goes up to six. So we can pay one to draw four cards now. Okay, they're making a Saga token here, probably because they don't want to keep having to hold priority. So let's draw some cards here. A Goblin Char Belcher. One, two, okay, so we can deploy our Char Belcher. If we'd have cracked one of our lines, our diamonds, we could have had this Galvanic Relay as well in case this goes wrong, but I think we should be okay. Yeah, so minus 19, they get to see our whole deck. And we have to set the order because they don't die until uh, state-based effects are checked. All right, that felt pretty good, but we got to do that on the draw now. So let's see how we go. I think the ley line is a good shout here. I think the galvanic relay is probably worse than Manamorphose. What we're trying to do here, I think, especially on the draw, we're not going to get the extra turn that we get off the galvanic relay necessarily. So let's try this. Play this. One, two. I don't think our hand does enough. I think we need to mulligan it. Mm, I like this because of the ley line. I think we're going to keep it. That could be a mistake, but... I think the thing we get rid of here is the thing that doesn't put a counter on the Flame Stoker. So we get rid of the Simeon Spirit Guide, and we'll begin the game with the ley line of the Void in play. We should hopefully mess with our opponent's engine. They've gone to five cards so far. They've gone to four cards, so they're probably looking for the Echo LED sort of hand which we have covered in the Leyline of the Void here. The, uh, the video I watched of Tony Scapone playing this didn't have the Leyline of the Voids in it at the time. And then he posted this in the, disc in the Storm Discord, this particular build, the slight change. And I think I'm going to be quite thankful for it. There goes the, the 
ley line. How screwed is our opponent by that one? Ancient Tomb, Lotus Petal, and it's over to us. Sure. So they're playing all the things out because they might not have a hand next turn. So play this for three life. Yes. So you play out this one guy. Then I think we're supposed to just play out the second Flame Stoker here. And then next turn we can play some more stuff. If our opponent's hand is bad, which hopefully it is, because they mold to four and we shot off their graveyard as a tool for them, then we might be able to get a little bit of damage in with these guys. A Mox Opal. Sure, we'll play that one. So this one's going to go to... So we can get this one to four counters, which means it'll cost three mana to spin. So we can't actually spin it this turn. So I think we're just going to go to attacks. I'm not expecting anything like Hole Breacher from our opponent here. I don't think it's worth trying to get the redraw on the Mana Morphos this turn, when next turn we all get to see another card. Containment Construct. Okay, so that stops us attacking with our 1-2s. But it doesn't do anything with a Ley Line in play. Okay, this is a good one. Get some counters on our guys. Just cast this. Cast this. Get some counters on our guys. Red. Red. Another one. Sure. So now this costs us one to draw four cards. Not the best four cards I've ever seen. Let's play this one out. Okay, let's scoop in because we're going to keep going here. Uh, we get to draw another four cards. Modo is going to crash before I get to see what they are. But yeah, felt pretty good. Vindictive Flame Stoker is absolute gas as a card. Um, it's one not, not a lot of people had their eye on, but it seems to do some pretty ridiculous work in these sorts of shells. All right, let's go to round two. We're on the play for round two. Not a bad place to be. What does our hand do? We can get a Flame Stoker down. I'm just trying to think of the best way of doing it. Uh, so if we put this one for the Flame Stoker, we have three artifacts and then write a Flame Manamorphose. Yeah, this seems fine. There goes one. Let's get a count on this one. Count on this, always yield to this. Let's get some red mana. Let's cast this right Flame. Cast this Manamorphose. Red, red. We have a Shatter Skull Smashing. Not a very exciting one here. We can draw four cards though. Okay. We will play this one tapped. And we'll probably play out our Lotus Petal here. I don't think we want to pop our baubles and stuff now. We lose one mana if we pop both of them. So we probably... Okay. What is our opponent doing? This is initiative, we should be able to race this. Shatter Skull Smashing, Rabble Master. Yeah, I think we can race this one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bauble ourselves. And if we see an artifact that costs zero mana, we can pop the other bauble to get another draw. Because it means we know we're going to have a um, Metalcraft. Shatter Skull Smashing is not Metalcraft, is it? Um, a Mana Morphose. That's not really what we need right now. One, two, three, four, if we play this. One, two, three, four. So we're looking for another artifact. Uh, no, sorry, we've got another artifact because the Mox Opal is itself an artifact, sure. So if our opponent can't kill us this turn, we get to char belch them out. Which seems all right. What do you have, opponent? It's got to be pretty good. Cursed Mirror. Okay, so this is coming in as maybe another Rebel Master? Sure. This is a lot of damage, but I don't think it's lethal, as long as I can, I can do simple maths. I haven't counted, I'm just going by feel here. These are going to be big though. How big? 6, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we're one shy. Wowzers. That's crazy. It's a lot of damage. Wowzers trousers. Char voucher. Boom. Any order. Minus 29. Sure. So we had a turn three there, but it nearly wasn't enough because our opponent, the Cursed Mirror with the Rabble Master is pretty good. This is a tech that I've not seen used that often, so it's pretty cool to see. So our opponent's probably going to be bringing in some stuff that we want to Shattering Spree here. The question is, what are the weakest cards in our deck for this particular matchup? I don't know what amount of Graveyard Hate our opponent's going to have for us, so these Echoes are an interesting one. Maybe the Bergy is too slow? Now, the Manamorphoses are obviously very good with the Flame Stoker here. Interesting. 
I'm not sure what these three come in for. This doesn't feel like an Empty the Warrens matchup to me. I believe the Empty the Warrens is supposed to be for the Delver matchup, is what Tony told me. So maybe we're getting rid of a Bergy. And like, the Manamorphose is good with the Flame Stoker and it's good with the Relay. So maybe we just trim one of each. Trimming one of each like that shows you that I don't really know what I'm doing, doesn't it? Okay, hey, let's submit like this. We spin the wheel here and we can also Shattering Spree if we need to. This seems good. That seems less good. Uh, understood, opponent. They do have the Ley Line. Maybe we're supposed to board in the Empty the Warrens then to get around Ley Line. Rabble Master. Sure. So, pretty powerful start from our opponent there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they kept a seven. It was a very strong seven. I think we're probably done on this one quite soon. I think we pay the life here. And we shattering spree their red source and hope they don't have another one. Okay, we managed to work out how to actually cast that spell in the end. So, we have a diamond. We might be in horrible trying to play out our Sin and Spirit Guide territory soon, which is not where I want to be. Okay, they don't have another red source, sure. Like we can draw a belcher to be fair. See what our opponent's two cards are. Chrome Mox, okay. Don't really care too much about the Chrome Mox. We just need to try and kill our opponent before this Rabble Master kills us. We're pretty close to belt. Okay. Another mana source? Oh. Not a million miles away. So we play this one out. We have one, two, three mana available. So we need one more mana to cast and kill them with Char Belcher. I think our Flame Stoker is probably just going to be going under the bus to buy us a turn here. Trinisphere. Yeah, that's a bit of an awkward one. Might prove challenging for us. So this Flamestoke is not going to do anything in this matchup right now. So this guy's coming in for five. So we block one, we take five, six, seven. And the next turn, this kills us. So we're kind of dead either way. I think we block this one in case we draw another one, because then we can block more damage next turn. It's going to be tough here. A Lotus Petal. So that costs three mana. Yeah. We're done there. All right, but we get to be on the play for the final round. Now, in the face of the um, Trinisphere, are we supposed to board in these Empty the Warrens? Maybe Empty the Warrens is better than Galvanic Relay here. Because if they don't have the Ley Line, then we do just get to roll them pretty hard with the Echoes. Maybe this is a weird one where we're just keeping some of our bits and pieces in. Flame Stoker is pretty tasty here. Maybe we trim on one Echo in case I have a Ley Line. I don't really want to put these lands in because I don't think we have time to do multiple goes with our Char Belcher. So I think this is awkward, but it's probably where we go here. We can always cut one of these for another Manamorphose. Alright, this feels like a bad hedge, but... Maybe that's, or maybe we need a Bergy as well, because Bergy is pretty good at just discarding cards and drawing us through our deck. Maybe that's better than these Echoes, because we're probably going to be. I think we do want two Echoes in our deck, though. All right, we're gonna we're gonna roll like this. I'm not convinced. I've made the correct choices here, but I've made choices. What does this hand do? We make Flame Stoker. Without anything going on, I don't think we can keep this one. What does this hand do? Very little. Going again. This is... So we're going to have five cards here. So probably getting rid of this Mox. And I'd like the permanent source of mana here. LED is probably better than Mox Opal, although it's, it's close. Is Petal worse than... So if we have these, it means that we can play around a Trinisphere that our opponent has on turn one. That's why I'm kind of thinking... I think we probably have to roll high, though, and get rid of get rid of the Petal and the Mox here. Are they going to start the Ley Line in play? They are going to start the Ley Line in play. Sure. I thought that might be the case. So let's play this. Pay through life. Pay out this lad. Play this one. Play this one. Play out the bauble. 
So we can draw four cards now if we want to. I think we're supposed to pass the turn here, though. If they didn't have a ley line in play, I'd be more inclined. Okay, a chalice, presumably for zero here. Yes, okay, chalice for zero. Tough, tough to beat. So this box opal is not going to be turned on if we crack this bauble. So I think we probably just have to say, okay. We can still cast zeros into our flame stoker though. Very, very mediocre man beatdown, I guess. So if they play a Trinity this turn, then we're probably in a bad spot. Yikes, here it comes. I feel it in my bones. Nope, favor the mirror breaker. Okay, not a Trinosphere. Powerful card though. A Manamorphose. This is a card that we get to cast. Red, red. And we'll make red, red off of it. Empty the Warrens. Doesn't feel like where we want to be here, does it? So this costs three mana to pop. So we can crack our Lion's Eye Diamond to draw a card. To, to draw four cards. We lose our Empty the Warrens. And we're going to struggle to get more mana here. But I don't know if the situation is getting any better for us. Sure. Let's draw some cards. Okay. So we can cast this one. We can cast this one. It's going to get countered by the Chalice, but it's going to put a counter on our guy. So we have three mana available here. And how much does this cost? This costs four mana to pop. So we gamble for mana morphos. Probably what we need to be doing here. Try the 50-50. We failed on the 50-50. Okay. All right, let's have a look at our opponent's hand. A Goblin Rabble Master. Okay. So they're going to have some creatures there. We basically needed to turn one this matchup, I think. Ooh. Shattering Spree, though. That's not nothing. They're probably just going to deploy their Rabble Master now and just start getting the beat down while we're kind of flailing. Ooh, no, they want the Trinisphere. Okay. Understood. We're a long ways off casting any spells now. Feels like we're probably done so. A gamble that we can't cast. Attack with this. We know they've got a Ramble Master. I guess we'll take one draw to see if we hit a Shat Skull Smashing. Otherwise, I think we can probably. Or a Seaman Spirit Guide. Because we need runner runner draws here, I think. If we don't. Because their um, Ramble Master is going to get copied next turn and kill us anyway. I'm sure we saw a Ramble Master. Okay, they're just playing both of them. Yeah, I think we're just done here. Yeah, we got prisoned. Fair enough. We didn't get the turn one in the end because of the ley line. It is what it is. Maybe we're supposed to board in our soul lands for that one and just board out the Belcher completely. Uh, or maybe even keep the Belcher but have the soul lands instead of the echo plan. Because our opponent's probably going to mulligan to ley line. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not an aficionado, an aficionado with Belcher style decks at all. Alright, let's go to the third round. We're on the play, which is a good spot to be. What does our hand do? We make one, two mana. And then this one produces, gives us plus two mana after that. So this is one, two, three, four mana. So we can play the Char Belcher on turn one. And then we just need to find the mana to go again. Is my math right on that? So this taps for one, two. This one gives us plus one for this. Yeah. This is one, two, and then gives us plus two. Yeah, okay. So we play Charbox turn one, and then turn two, we draw a Lion's Eye Diamond and kill them. We do have this little bit of tension with our baubles. We can sacrifice one of them because we'll have a Charbelcher. We can't sacrifice both of them. Although we can do the Mishra's Bauble trick on ourselves to see if we're going to get Metalcraft. Bauble. Bauble. Opal. Right of Flame. Chabocha. If our opponent is a Force of Will deck, we at least have the ability to Wheel of Fortune off of our Echo Vions down the line. Alright, what did they discard to this? A Brainstorm. It doesn't give us the most amount of information. Marsh Flats. I guess the only thing that the Brainstorm tells us is that they're not like some sort of Cascade deck. So this could be Doomsday. Careful study. So this looks like the Reanimator deck. Understood. I think we're supposed to crack both these baubles. Careful study, sure. We're basically just looking for Lion's Eye Diamond here. Now we're probably going to draw a gamble. 
because we sacrificed the things that give us metal craft. But, oh, we drew the lines our diamond. Okay. There's no way we get to play around this. So I guess we're just casting our echo and hoping it's good. Okay. What does this hand do? We can play our land out. So they don't have a creature card in their graveyard now, which is nice for us. So I think we play out the... Uh, so if we... Hold on. Let's do some maths here. So we play both of these out. That will give us three mana. Would we rather have a big galvanic relay or a, a good flamestoker turn? Now, our mana morphos might hit into a... Good, so, how, so we've got storm count of two. So this would be three, four... Five. So that is more cards than we're going to get off of a Flame Stoker. So we probably should be doing that, I guess. Now our opponent can have Force of Wilt here. I think we imprint the Galvanic Relay here. We go for a Manamorphose here. Red. Red. A gamble. I don't think we need to be gambling right now. I think we are just casting this Galvanic Relay right now. And we can see what we're going to get off of it as well. And then we can work out what we're doing with our Baubles. Because our opponent plays hand disruption, we don't want to crack the bauble until our opponent's turn. Okay, so we're definitely going to have our bauble online, our metalcraft online, because we've got a mistress bauble and a chrome mox over there. Okay, we might have to do a, a hard cast echo of eons using the gamble to get a lion's eye diamond, but that's a little bit risky. Okay, so our opponent has to assemble their whole combo in one turn here, which is certainly possible because they're starting with one more mana because they had a land to begin with. Okay, so Grizzlebrand and Archon of Cruelty have popped into their graveyard. Now, we can still beat through an, a Grizzlebrand or an Archon. That doesn't necessarily win the game for them. Dance of the Dead on a Grizzlebrand. So this one, if you're unfamiliar with it, it puts the creature in tapped, and you have to pay two during your upkeep to untap it, and it doesn't untap. So each time you, each, each time you want to untap it, you have to pay mana, but you'll probably find doing that because you got a Grizzlebrand, right? So our opponent's probably going to have a grip full of counter magic. All right, let's have a look at one of our opponent's cards. An Entomb. Okay. What are they going to discard? A bunch of stuff. Sure. A gamble. That's not really where we want to be here. I think we... I think we're playing this out for a mana source. This way we can play around days before we start playing our one drops. Or our zero drops. So the days and force of will are the two count spells in this list if it's the one that I played the other day. Just gives us the ability to play around two daisies. Okay, so you can play our bauble. Let's counter on the guy. Um, do you want to try and do some gambling first? Or we can manamorphose to get another card into our deck. That seems good to me. I think we want red red here. Okay, so I'm gonna cast this right flame. Get some counters on this guy. And then I think we're gonna cast a gamble. So we'd like a Lion's Eye Diamond, please. Okay, so we've got a Lion's Eye Diamond into play. So now we can play out this Mox Opal. We can Entomb. Uh, we, should, we should have played the Chrome Mox up first. That was a uh, so we can Entomb a Echo Vions. That's the thing we need to do. And then this can draw us a bunch of cards for four mana if we want it. So I think we try and flashback there's echo eons this might get a counter spell from our opponent i'm going to draw seven cards let's draw some cards ourselves a char belcher can we realistically put this char belcher onto the stack i don't know let's try this don't really want our opponent to counter spell our right of flame here we are force of willing our right of flame because we cannot cast our galvanic relay now yeah, that was definitely something we could have played around slightly there. Okay. Our opponent has the ability to deal us 8 damage. Possibly 11 damage if they put, play the Archon. It seems unlikely that they're going to be able to deal us the full 14. So we're going to get another turn. And their life total doesn't really matter because when we hit them it's for loads. They do get to draw a bunch more cards if they want to themselves. Thoughts using us, sure. We're going to lose our Char Belcher. They successfully played around the relay. We could have had a bigger relay. Maybe we should have played slightly differently. All right. A reanimate. Not that exciting. We need to win on our next turn. 
So let's see, this, this Gavinet Relay is not going to be doing anything for us. We're going to need a little bit of help from our deck. An Echo. A Flame Stick. So what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five mana. So we can't cast this Echo. This costs seven, so we need eight mana in total to do that. I think they have just, just dead if they untap their guy. So we just concede and go to sideboarding. So these Lane Line and the Voids feel like they're going to be pretty good in this matchup. What is going to be bad in this matchup? Bergy seems quite slow. I think we want the relays in because our opponent is trying to hurt us with counter spells. So I think the Ley Lines make sense here. Is our opponent running Ley Lines? I don't know is the answer to that one. So what are we looking at cutting? Is it the Morphos? I don't think we can cut any of our zero drops. They're pretty integral to what we're doing. Are we cutting Gambles? That seems very loose. Maybe we're just going to do some horrible trims because I don't know what I'm doing. That's, that's always fun, isn't it? Uh, so we get rid of those two and maybe it is another Morphos. All right, let's try this. Sure, we get to spin the wheel with a bit of bonus stuff going on. Now they do play show and tell in their deck at the sideboard, but they might not suspect, suspect us of having ley lines. Their deck basically can't hard cast their big guys either. So if they haven't brought in show and tells and we stick to ley lines, they might not be able to win at all. Do we want this to imprint on a Chrome Mox or do we want this in play? I think we want it in play because our opponent have Brazen Borrowers. Chancellor of the Annex. Okay. Let's play this Chromox into the Chancellor trigger. Goodbye, Chromox. Let's play a Bauble. Let's play a Lion's Eye Diamond. Let's sacrifice this for Triple Blue. And try and Echo Vions. Okay, they've got a Force of Will. Sure. Galvanic Relay. Right, we will let that slide for now. Don't think we need to pop our Baubles in the, our bauble in the immediate future because we're kind of looking for Metalcraft here. We can hold this or we can have it for Metalcraft and drawing a card. I think it's probably better in play because our opponent is going to have Thought Seasons in their deck and probably Griefs. Let's see. Just lands from our opponent. So what are we up to here? We can start cracking baubles if that's the thing we're into. But our opponent is giving us some amount of time so I think we just have to sit back for a sec. And take it all in. So this careful study is going to put some cards in their exile and we get to see what those are. Our opponent can have some number of Force of Negations and Fluster Storms as well. Okay. A thought sees, sure. We're going to lose our Galvanic Relay. A Lion's Eye Diamond. We will put this into play. I don't think we need to go yet. A hard cast Grief, sure. So now there is a clock in play. I think we'll crack one Mishra's Ball we're looking at the top card of our library and see if that changes how we feel about the other baubles. Galvanic Relay. I'm going to need a decent amount of stuff to go with that, really. So I think we're just drawing our two cards. One for turn and one for the bauble. Shatter Skull Smashing. She'll play this. Tapped. So now we have lines of Gamble and things like that, so much better off cracking these baubles than we were before. Let's see what they've got in their hand. An Animate Dead. So we've got on top of the library. A Dance of the Dead. Some blanks, then. Lotus Petal... And Flamestoker. Flamestoker is a good one. Echo Eon's obviously pretty good too. Let's play out our friend the Flamestoker. Okay, we're getting a brainstorm, looking for an answer here. No, we're getting a daze. If we play out the Lotus Petal first, but we kind of want the Lotus Petal for this. So, goodbye Flamestoker. Let's go to the second main. Let's let them burn off this one mana they got floating. So they can't hard cast a Force of Will. And we know the other card in their hand is a black card. So the only thing that gets us here is a Daze, I think. But we can pay around the Daze because we have a Lotus Petal. All right. Let's go fish in for more cards. Um, one, two... Okay, so we can do a Relay this turn. That seems fine. A Red. Spirit Guide. Spirit Guide. Relay. We've got a lot of tools to work with for next turn. And we can crack this bauble. We know our opponent doesn't have counter magic right now because we know they've got Dance of the Dead and Animate Dead in hand. All right. This should be a good turn for us. Should be able to put this one away now looking at what we've got here. Let's have a look, Seize. Let's make this a bit bigger for us. 
So we're going to draw a card off this bauble. It's a rubbish layout on the void. Okay, first things first, let's play out your friend of mine, the Flame Staker. Cast Bauble. Cast a Lion's Eye Diamond. Cast a Lion's Eye Diamond. Cast a Lion's Eye Diamond. Uh, we will tap this for red to cast our right flame. And we'll play our Mox Opal. And we'll draw four cards. We'll play this guy out. And then where are we going? I think we can play out this right flame using our Mox Opal. So this is three mana. This costs currently six. This will make it cost slightly less. Five. We play this one out. Yes. So we'll crack this one for triple red. And we'll crack this one for triple blue. And we will draw some cards. All right, we have a gamble. Uh, if this hits Char Belcher, we just win. So let's cast this gamble. Actually, we don't need to cast this this turn. We can just do another big relay, can't we? Cast this bauble. Cast this relay. We can even cast out the spirit guide if we want to this turn. And I think we just pass through the turn here. So next turn, we can Char Belcher plus all this Galvanic relay cards. Our opponent's only got three damage in play right now. Bit of a longer game than I was expecting this one to be. Flusterstorm, you say. Oh god, this is going to be horrible to work out which ones I can pay for and which ones I can't. All right. Let me say no to others because we can't. So I've done this right. There should be four. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a few copies going through. We could have cracked our lines, our diamond, but we have this char box which we'd very much like to try and win with. All right. So we're going to crack both our as baubles because we're still going to have metalcraft anyway. Weird long game, this one. Thoughtseize. So we lose our Char Belcher. That's pretty frustrating. The Char Belcher would have got around a Flutterstorm that turn, but they might have other permission. Animate dead on our little guy. Sure. I guess it's not doing anything else in their hands, so. They've got Lotus Petals, they can get the red mana eventually. Sure. Okay, they're taking these out so we can't Echo Vions them back into our deck. Let's just sacrifice these so we can pass through a turn. Marsh Flats in our opponent's hand. The same Marsh Flats most likely in our opponent's hand. So we take the damage here. And then we draw some cards. A Char Belcher. That's a good card. That's one of the ones we wanted. So we'll tap this for red. Two. Three. Four. And we'll play this to play around days. Let's try for this Char Belcher. If this doesn't work, we can echo the ons. Okay, we got there in the end. Yikes, that took forever. Um, I don't hate the way we've sideboarded here. I think it makes sense. Possibly we want the Bergy just as another payoff card for when these games go longer. So maybe that's slightly better. All right, we'll try it like this. Again, I'm no, I'm no expert with this sort of deck. So. My logic is having another payoff considering how long that game went. Now, we've only got about 11 minutes on our clock but that should be enough to put this away or get bodied by them really quickly. This is stuff, but it doesn't really go anywhere, so we have to mulligan it. This would be what I would describe as a keep. We're better off with Simon Spirit Guides or the Lotus Petal. The Lotus Petal is probably less exciting for us. Uh, so this is one. This gives us two mana. This gives us three mana. So this is a turn one Belcher. And if that doesn't work, we get to spin the wheel. So this feels like a pretty good hand. All right, two mana, and the next one adds two mana. That's four mana total, sure. Thoughts ease, take our something good. Maybe take the Belcher, Spirit Guide, or LED. Those are probably the best, best picks for them. I took the Char Belcher. Okay. Like our hand does a thing. You can have a lot of mana floating for this. We are all in on this Echo Eons. We're certainly paying around days, though. We we'll pay like this in case you draw another one and we can hard cast it from hand. Oh, it just went. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Let's play out our little friend. So we could try and gamble here. But I think we don't need to do that. I think we can... Just keep going with some bits and pieces here. So do you want this 
probably want the if we imprint the gamble here and we can play this one out maybe I'm supposed to try and gamble for a char voucher there play this one out cast this one one two so we get a galvanic relay for next turn and then we get to go for an Echo Vions. This time I think we will pay our blue mana. Oakley Dokley. So what does this hand do? We play this one out. This should be, we should be able to win from here, I think. Uh, let's play this one. So let's pay three life. Let's play out our Anza Diamond. Let's exile this Sin Spirit Guide. Let's cast this guy. And let's crack this for triple blue. Let's have some more. We don't really want to keep Galvanic relaying here, to be honest with you. Uh, let's see what's in our exile zone. A char belcher, a bunch of other good stuff. Um, 18 cards in our library is plenty. Sure, I think we just pass a turn here. Into sure. So they could get the emissary that gives them protection from artifacts. That feels pretty bad for us, actually. Maybe we're supposed to keep going there. Chancellor of the Annex. Okay, we don't care about that. That's fine. Seren's Emissary would have been bad, but Chancellor of the Annex, we can ignore. Grief. Sure. Be my guest. My hand is very stacked. They can take the Lion's Eye Diamond because this represents plus mana. Maybe we should have played these things out because of the Chancellor. We knew it was coming, potentially. Okay, let's see if I can navigate this turn with all of the resources in the world. Let's go for... Exile in this red mana first. Um, how many right of flames have we got? We've got two right of flames here. So I think we play this, paying three life. And we cast this right of flame. We can pay for this one. So this right of flame is just a manamorphose. The next one actually gives us plus mana. Okay. So we want to play out a diamond here. Then we play out the second diamond. And cast this with the mana we have here. They have a force of will. That's fine because we crack this one. Gives us five mana. We can play this char voucher. We can pay the one. And we don't get to play any of these unless we want them in our graveyard, which we probably do. This is, this is a lot of time on our clock to doing this, so I think we just pass the turn here. And next turn, our opponent's got one card in hand, and we just activate Char Belcher, targeting them in the upkeep. Yeah, I don't think this is the cleanest game. Okay, they they conceded. Like I said, I don't think it was the cleanest game. We could have been a bit cleaner. Maybe we could have gone the turn before and tried to win the game. I just thought I had all these things coming through. But obviously, the Chancellor messes us up. We could have played all our artifacts because they had a chance that we knew was in their deck. So, yeah. Not the cleanest, but we got the win. Uh, let's go into the fourth round. I think this hand is keepable. We're on the draw. If we find any additional mana to go. So we can just play out the right of flame into the stoker, but we're probably just going to play the stoker and pass, which isn't necessarily what we want, but I feel we can probably go on turn two. Now a bunch of draws just completely change the way this hand plays. Sure. Blue mana from our opponent. Grief. Good grief, we're just playing against this reanimated deck all the time. Oakley dokily. So we probably lose the diamond or the belcher, I'd say. Could be the Shatter's Go and try and strand us without starting mana. But that's a bit risky, I think. If you think about the way this can go wrong for our opponent. Now our opponent could be on um, Death Shadow as well. They run grief into reanimate these days. Okay, this took our starting mana to try and strand us without plays. Sure. Now, they might just reanimate this and take another cut. Yep. Oakley dokily. What are they taking? This time, it's probably the LED. It takes us off of Metalcraft, and it's also the best way we can get back into the game via a Whirly Jig or whatever they're called. The Echo Vions. And Urza's Bauble. I think we have to play these out and try and get some redraws. Scalding Tile from our opponent. A Brainstorm. So our opponent doesn't actually have that many cards in their hand. They've got two cards after this Brainstorm resolves. So maybe we pop these and try and find a bit more action. 
Okay, they're cracking their scalding tarn. Oh, they got follow-up play. Could be a death shadow. A little tutu. Just a ponder. Okay. So the hand's going to be a lot better than it was at the start of the turn. But it still might not be what they need it to be. So let's just see. They'll probably snap off a daze on like the first right of flame we cast as well, which is not great. I think we are looking at our opponent's hand. Force of will. Understood. And on top of the library is a death shadow. Okay, so we've got to play through a force of will here. This is going to be challenging. Come on, draw step. Hook me up. Okay, we're in a very similar position to last turn. We still have to play through that little force of will, though. They might not have another blue card for it, but they might do. So they can attack for three, then they're going to deploy their death shadow. And then they're going to sit on force of will blue card, most likely. There's the shadow we know about. Sure, a bell for Strix. We don't really care about that. Let's see if it is a blue card. Days. Yep, yeah, okay. So they have blue card force of will. How do we beat that? <laughs> Wowzers. We've certainly got Echo Vions for days. So this is f six damage right now, so that's not the end of the world for us. I guess you play this one out and pass the turn, I guess. So if they can injure themselves in any way, they can kill us next turn. So if we cast any spell, they can daze. Okay, what a great. So we ha we're dead next turn, regardless of what happens here. So, do we have hit any mana? Okay. So we're going to cast this Lion's Eye Diamond. Our opponent's going to daze it, probably. We know they have Force of Will. I think we just don't show them our hand here. So I've been told that in the Delver matchup, you board these things in in place of our regular combo because it's just so hard to resolve the Char Belcher. So we just get rid of these Gambles and Char Belchers. So we're going to board the same way as Delver. I think it's pretty similar what we're looking at here. So let's give it a go. Our opponent might bring in the Powder Keg to kill all our little guys, which would be sad. What does this hand do? We make a galvanic relay on turn one, so it's like, right, do we make a galvanic relay on turn one? No, not really. What we'll be imprinting. So this imprints the spirit guide. Yeah, we need to mulligan. This hand doesn't do enough. Okay, I can probably work with this one for the next turn. We're getting rid of the echo. Let me get rid of the echo based on what's in our hand right now. So this can go wrong if our opponent wastelands us. Let it be known. But well, next turn we can Manamorphose, Manamorphose, Galvanic Relay. And then this will be live the following turn most likely. Don't wasteland us, bro. They didn't wasteland us. Don't thought seize us, bro. Ah, an Echo of Eons I don't want. Excellent. Let's try again with this Morphose. They let the last one resolve, so you should probably let this one resolve. So now we get Bauble out. Post Lion's Eye Diamond, see if our opponent decides to fight over the Lion's Eye Diamond. They did not. Then we can Galvanic Relay. We can keep going and try and spin the wheel. If it doesn't work, we've got a bunch of cards in Exile. That aren't actually that exciting, but there's something. This is a Brainstorm. Looking for a Force of Will. Or is it a Flusterstorm? Okay, they're just dazing it. Sure. We cannot pay. Right, we could have got one point damage in there, actually. All right. Let's see it's what our opponent's about to draw. A Polluted Delta. We can F6 for this turn. Okay, they just scoopings out. Interesting. I guess their hand was just full of lands or something. So, I guess we keep the play, just treating them like Delver and keeping our empty warrens. They didn't see the empty the warrens though, so that's good. They know we have Child Belcher because they saw it before. This hand doesn't really go anywhere, so I think we should mulligan it. Chromox, Imprint Spirit Guide. So we have two mana from this, three mana from this. We can cast a Bergy, but does that go anywhere? Not especially. Hmm. Kind of looking for like Galvanic Relays and stuff, but the lower we go, the worse our Relays are going to be. I think we keep this. Uh, so we've got to ditch one card. I think the lowest impact card is probably the Bauble here. And so done. Now our opponent probably doesn't have a lot of removals, so maybe we just get the Bergy beat down going. Stranger things have happened, right? So, obviously, the lower we go on the draw, the more chance we have of just getting Thoughtseize to Oblivion as well. Like this. So, we probably lose the Bergy or the Diamond here. 
it could it's going to be hard for them to take us off initial mana so i think you're going to leave these bits and get the diamond or the burgie if they take the diamond it signals they don't have well i suppose it doesn't actually signal too much okay so it's the burgie so that was our payoff gone could maybe could have horn of Harrenfell. so we can either play these cards out or we can hold them for a relay i think we are best off holding them for a relay or a empty the warren since both of our wing both of the things we're trying to draw to now really are storm spells a brainstorm from our opponent Polluted delta being cracked taking some damage making a one one okay understood three cards in our opponent's hand we pass the turn our hand doesn't do anything we need a payoff so we've got echoes we can draw and Gavanic Relays and Empty the Warrens. Can we cast that? One, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so we can get a little Empty the Warrens out. And if our opponent's life total gets quite low, we might be able to get there. We can roadblock a Death Shadow for a long time with Empty the Warrens. Okay. I guess we play out a Lotus Petal here. I don't think it's worth us playing out a Simon Spirit Guide. It could enable something like a snuff out, which shouldn't be in our opponent's deck, but might be. And we just want to have the best turn we can have next turn if we draw one of the things we need. Okay. Taking a tiny bit of damage here. This is fine. As long as they're 1-1s. One -one. Grief is pretty bad for us. Our hand is kind of the same thing all over, though. So it's probably just going to be the Lion's Eye Diamond that they take, which does mean that we are less likely to be able to pull it out with an Echo or something. So it'll reduce the amount of draws we have that are good. But it should be the LED here. Yep, there it is. Whilst they're 1-1s, one and our opponent seems to struggle to grow them, I don't think we want to just play out a spirit guide. Okay, the clock has dramatically changed now. We really need to find some action. Galvanic Relay is okay this turn, but won't be okay the turn after. Because we'll be dead on that turn. Now, it might not be good enough next turn either, if they have a fetch hand or anything. So, a Force of Will also helps in that. Oh lord, I guess we're playing out Chrome Mox. Guess we imprint Rite of Flame. Play this. And we'll cast a Mox Monkey so we can try and. Not Mox Monkey, a uh, Sin Spirit Guide just so we can try and survive a turn. If they daze this, we can pay. But again, it makes our life a lot worse. This can potentially buy us a turn. So we have to block. A Hydroblast. Yep, yeah, we're just dead on board. Sure. Yeah, so the Death Shadow is a deck that has a fast clock backed up by Hand Disruption and Counter Magic. So it's going to be tricky, but I think we probably should have mulliganed a bit more. But then again, we're probably just going to get picked apart by that turn one thought seed if we go any lower anyway. So, lends me the break sometimes. Let's go on to the final round. This makes, this can gamble into Lion's Eye Diamond. We have two bites of the cherry as well, so I think we can probably give this a go. A basic mountain. A shadow spell. Okay. So our opponent is on burn. We should be able to race a burn player. So let's cast a gamble for a lion's eye diamond. We kept the lion's eye diamond. That's pretty good. So we can play out this mox. We can try and gamble again for another lion's eye diamond. I don't hate that as a play. Yep, we got there. Sure. So we can tap this for red. Let me crack this for blue with blue. And we have one red mana to start with. That's probably enough. Let's cast this with flashback. We use up all of our blue mana here. We want to keep one in play just in case we draw another one. Okay, they are just scooping here. Um, do I think we can actually... Would we have been able to go off here? I don't know. Begin sideboarding. So, what is a burn player going to do to us? Honestly, I don't know. Don't see a lot of burn. I think our creature is probably pretty good here. Cast little spells. It's going to be the Eidolon, isn't it? So we probably need to go... We probably just want stuff to go faster around Eidolon. Are they running Ley Lines? I don't know. Maybe we're trimming on an Echo for an Empty. I don't know if we have that much time for some of these things, but maybe we do. We'll just trim on some of these things. 
I'm not very happy with how it's sideboarded here, but I don't really know what I'm supposed to board. Okay, so... Artifact, artifact, artifact. No starting mana is kind of... Well, we've got this, actually, haven't we? So this is one, two mana. Three, four. We kind of need a little bit of something. I think we can keep this because the Eidolon doesn't come down until turn two. Well, that's our opponent's turn two, isn't it? I suppose. But we can... If we draw a little bit more mana, we might be able to get there. Swift Spear, sure. Don't really know what hate our opponent has for us. They could have Mind Break Traps. Oh, that's certainly a bit more mana, isn't it? So let's have this one. And this one. And this one. And we'll crack this for red to cast a Rite of Flame. And we'll cast another Rite of Flame. We'll cast a Mana Morphose. Make red, red. Our opponent appears to have X F6 pretty hard here. So we're just going to make a bunch of goblins, I suppose. We will not pay the life. And we'll pass the turn. We've got two turn clock here. Seems very unlikely our opponent can deal with this many goblins. All right. So they scooped up and we got the 3-2. Let's have a chat about the deck. So this deck felt, you know, it's doing powerful things. It's not really doing anything aside from the Flame Stoker. This is the new big thing. Everything else is stuff we've seen before. But the Flame Stoker is just like another echo almost. It's only four cards. But it's relatively easy to set up as you saw. And you can kind of just sort of leave it there. We didn't do the thing where you activate it and then crack a Lion's Eye Diamond in response sort of thing we just usually emptied our hand anyway and then cracked the led to like activate or whatever but that seems quite powerful my biggest problem with this deck is i didn't know how to sideboard with it so i knew that we, we were boarding in the i knew some of the bits because i asked tony before i started playing and he gave me a few little pointers some of the stuff is pretty obvious in terms of what comes out is always difficult because decks like this are obviously quite focused on what they're doing so i think if you were a better player than me at these sorts of decks, because if you ask me what decks uh, I don't really want to, or what I'm not very good at playing, I'll probably tell you Storm decks, because they're really hard and I don't have the time, I haven't put in the time to play these decks. And the sort of, the green, white, middly, middle rangey type decks I don't really get on very well with. The sort of drawing one card a turn, Mavericky style decks, I, I struggle a bit with those. So this is pretty good a 3-2 from me yeah i'm happy with that considering my inability to play these sort of decks and as you saw there was were games where we went down to like five minutes and we had a thing where if our opponent had the semis emissary we could have lost i wasn't thinking about semis emissary because i played the blue black deck the other day and i haven't seen a list with semis emissary in yet but that would probably be an interesting addition that people could run so I think this deck is good. I don't have the necessary skill with Stormy Belcher decks to make any criticisms of the deck. Other than I should probably try and get a Cyborg Guide first. I will say that the Flame Stoker felt incredible. And I expect to see this popping up a lot in the future. I think the ability to sort of dump a load of cantripping zeros into it. And then turn those into real cards later on as well. So you're... Your cantrips kind of end up being draw twos. They're a bit delayed, but that seems like a very powerful thing to be doing. It actually makes Mana Morphos a good card in a Storm deck, which is something it rarely is, in my opinion. Uh, again, my limited opinion. The Bergy was never really something we had much call to do things with. When I was watching Tony's video, he was playing on Horn a few times and just using that to rip for his deck, which felt very powerful. We never got that. He was playing more copies of it, but... But the list he posted for me was reduced in the number of copies of Bergy. So obviously he found that they weren't very good either. So that makes sense to me. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about this deck other than it was really fun. And Vindictive Flame Stoker is a card you should buy if you like playing these sorts of decks, really. It seemed like a pretty powerful one. I might see if I can find it in some slightly different shells that might be worth trying to play it in. But we'll see how we go on that one, because obviously this is a little bit out of my comfort zone. All right. Thank you very much for watching. And just before I say goodbye, like, comment, subscribe. These things cost you nothing, so please do them. And also, while you're here, click the link in my description and go on Tony's channel and give him a sub too, because he makes really good content if you like Storm decks 
and Belchery type decks, you should probably give them a like and a subscribe as well. You know, us Magic players and content makers got to help each other out, right? And his content is good. So there is that. All right. I think we're done now. So thanks for watching and goodbye.